All right, everyone, welcome to this Home Place webinar, Introduction to the New Georgia Historic Newspapers website. Please note that this session will be recorded. When the recording becomes available, it will be posted on the GPLS Learning Center at learning.georgialibraries.org and GPLS YouTube stream at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Georgia Public Library. Documents from today's webinar can be found at ow.ly forward slash IJFP30SQYJO, which will be posted to the chat box shortly. To ask questions, please post them to the chat box. We will answer as many as possible in the time allowed. And if possible, please phrase questions in a more general way so answers can be useful to everyone. And we'll begin the webinar in just a moment. All right, hello and welcome to the second program in our webinar series, which is brought to you by, the, by Georgia Home Place, a project of the Georgia Public Library Service. Today's webinar is an introduction to the new Georgia Historic Newspapers website. Today's presentation is being recorded and will be made available in both the GPLS Learning Center and our YouTube stream. These links will be emailed to all participants once the recording is available and documents from today's webinar can be found at the URL on your screen. Continuing education credit is available for those participants that require it. Please contact Dorcas Davis at ddavis at georgialibraries.org to request a certificate. My name is Angela Stanley and I am Director of Georgia Home Place for the Georgia Public Library Service. We are so pleased to be able to bring you this series on managing public library archives and special collections. Before we turn to today's program, I would like to quickly familiarize everyone with the WebEx webinar program. You can use the control panel to make modifications to your audio setting. If you'd like, you can also hide the control panel with the arrow at the top of your screen. All attendees are automatically muted by the program, but you can communicate and ask questions during the webinar through the chat, uh, through the chat box which I will be monitoring. Shorter questions will be addressed during the webinar as time allows, and Donnie will answer any in-depth questions following the presentation. I'd like to take a moment to briefly share some information about Home Place and the Digital Library of Georgia. Home Place is an acronym standing for Providing Library and Archives Collections Electronically. Georgia Home Place encourages public libraries and related institutions across the state of Georgia to participate in the Digital Library of Georgia through digital projects, trainings, and consultations. HomePlace is made possible through the support of LSTA funds administered by the Institute for Museum and Library Services. The Digital Library of Georgia is a Galileo initiative based at the University of Georgia Libraries that collaborates with Georgia's libraries, archives, museums, and other institutions of education and culture to provide access to key information resources on Georgia history, culture, and life. This primary mission is accomplished through the ongoing development, maintenance, and preservation of digital collections and online digital library resources. Please visit our website at gahistoricnewspapers.galileo.usg.edu and georgialibraries.org forward slash homeplace and dlg.galileo.usg.edu for more details. If you'd like to sub subscribe to the DLG's listserv, through which the partner newsletter is distributed quarterly, please visit bit.ly forward slash DLG news. These links will also be posted to the chat box shortly. You can hear more about development of the Georgia Historic Newspapers website, as well as updates on collaborative newspaper digitization efforts at both the Georgia Libraries Conference and the Society of Georgia Archivists annual meeting where Donnie and I will be presenting on our work. We hope to see you there. If you have a question about the webinar series or are interested in offering a presentation that would benefit public librarians managing archives and special collections, please email me at astanley at georgialibraries.org. All right, and now on to our presenter. Donnie Summerlin is a, a lifelong resident of Georgia and was raised in Columbia County. He has earned a BA in History from the University of Georgia, an MA in History from Georgia College, and an MLIS from Valdosta State University. 
He spent several years as an instructor of history at Georgia College in Millersville. Donnie began working on newspaper digitization at the Digital Library of Georgia in 2007. Over the last decade, he has been working to improve access to the DLT's online newspaper archives, and work that has re uh, which is work that's resulted in the digitization of over one million historical newspaper pages. Donnie has published articles in DLib Magazine, the Journal of the Georgia Association of Historians, and the New Georgia Encyclopedia, as well as the Georgia Library Quarterly. He is a member of the Society of American Archivists, the American Historical Association, and the Society of Georgia Archivists. Johnny will be available for questions following the presentation. Please feel free to type them into the chat box. And now if you'll bear with me one moment, I'm going to hand the controls over to Johnny for his presentation. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to talking with you about our new Georgia Historic Newspapers website. I'll start out with a brief history of the newspaper digitization efforts at the Digital Library of Georgia, and then I'll introduce you to the new Georgia Historic Newspapers site, including a walkthrough of the site's various features. Then I'll let you know what's ahead for our newspaper digitization project. So the Digital Library of Georgia began digitizing newspapers in 2007 with a pilot project to build a red and black newspaper archive. That's the University of Georgia's school newspaper. During the project, we set up a workflow to digitize future Georgia newspapers. Our priorities were to make sites freely available and to offer a highlighted searching and browsing options for our users. Over the last 10 years, we've released and improved several standalone newspaper sites for Georgia titles, cities, and regions, amounting to nearly 1 million newspaper pages. Now, these sites include, or do include, the Macon Telegraph Archive, the South Georgia Historic Newspapers Archive, and several others that you may have visited in the past. Our goal was to eventually combine these sites into a single online newspaper archive. We were able to achieve that goal when in July 2017, the Digital Library of Georgia released the new Georgia Historic Newspapers website, which you can see here. The site utilizes the Library of Congress's National Chronicling America platform and will allow us to offer all of our newspaper content in a single place. Additionally, the Georgia Historic Newspapers archive will feature several new browsing and searching options region pages that recreate the operability of past regional newspaper sites. Uh, we also offer title histories, thumbnail search results, a help page with tutorial videos, along with the addition of several never before available titles. I'll go over these features uh, during my walkthrough of the Georgia Historic Newspapers website. Um, I've provided the website URL on this slide in case you want to follow along. Um, that URL is gahistoricnewspapers.galileo.usg.edu, and that URL is available in the chat box as well. These are a couple of my favorite images from the newspapers. So this is the home page of the Georgia Historic Newspapers website. 
I'm having trouble sharing in just a moment. Here we go. Okay, so this is the home page of the uh, website for Georgia Historic Newspapers. You can see it offers several options, including an advanced search page, which is located here, a region page drop-down menu, and a browse drop-down menu, along with links for the help page, uh, a participate page, and an about page with information about the site, as well as a news uh, link or uh, news about what titles we'll be adding in the future. So let's start with the search box uh, at the top of the page. Um, if we enter the word airship and either press enter on the keyboard or click the search button, you can see it takes us to a results page that now offers thumbnail views of the results instead of just a list of titles and dates, which was what was previously available. And so uh, this has the advantage of letting you see the newspaper page before you click on it. So if you click on a newspaper page, let's find an interesting one here. Uh, it's in Sunny South in 1892. You can see it takes just a moment to load, but this is the Sunny South newspaper page. And there you can see the word airship is highlighted. We have hit highlighting for your keywords on the page. You can see there's an interesting image of an airship there, or their idea of one in 1892. And uh, if you're interested in zooming in to portions of the page, we have a series of buttons in the upper left-hand corner. And so if I, to, if I were to click this plus button, uh, you can see it allows us to zoom in to this fellow, the inventor. And the buttons are still over here, and we can zoom out as well. And if you get to a point where you want to get back to where you started, there's a home button. If you click that, it will give you the full page view. Then there's also a full screen button as well. If you click that, it shows the page in full screen mode. And you can press escape to get out of that mode. So uh, in addition uh, to the zooming on the page, uh, you're also uh, able to clip portions of the page. So I'm going to zoom in to that inventor again on the page. And let's say you just wanted to clip this portion of the page and not the rest of it. We now have an option available on the site where you can click the Clip Visible Area button in the upper right-hand corner. And when you do that, it loads a new tab, and it'll take just a moment for the image to load. But you can see it provides you with just a portion of the page that you zoomed in on. And you have the option of printing the page by pressing the Print This Page button. And you're also provided with a persistent link that will always take you to this specific page and this clipping of this specific page. In addition to the clipping options, I'm going to close this tab. You also have the ability to view the OCR text, the optical character recognition text, and also a PDF version of the page. So the OCR text, um, you can view it by clicking the View Page Text button in the upper right-hand corner. And you can see it provides you with the machine-readable form of the text from the page image. And this is the text that the platform uses for searching. You can see that although it's pretty good, it's not 100% perfect in the way the machine read the words off the page. You can see errors throughout, um, which is why uh, searching may not always be 100% accurate, but this is, uh, we try to get as close as we can, but OCR isn't perfect. But this will allow you to see what the words are behind the page. So I'm going to click back on the browser. You also have the ability to view a PDF version of the page as well. So I'm clicking that and it will load a PDF version of the page as opposed to the JPEG, uh, which you're viewing uh, natively on the site. You can see there's a nice PDF version of the page. And Sunny South has a great banner at the top of the page. So I'm going to click the back button. And that will take us back to our original image view. So in addition uh, to the page views, we also have an advanced search option. 
So by clicking the search button at the top of the page, you can see the advanced search page offers you a variety of options for more specific searches. Let's say you're interested in recipes from the 1800s in the Augusta, East Georgia area. So you can enter the word recipes in the pages containing all of the words uh, box. Let's say you were interested in recipes or cures. You could type in recipes and cures in this box. And since it's any of the words, it would produce page results where it found recipes or it found cures. But we'll just stick with recipes for now. You also have the ability to, uh, to uh, choose how close you want your, your words that you're searching for to be in terms of proximity. So you have options for 5, 10, 50, and 100. Additionally, there are uh, search limits as well, including uh, you can limit by city, by type, by county, by region, and by newspaper title. So let's say you were interested in newspapers or recipes from Augusta. If you start typing in Augusta, you can see it allows you, it, it kind of fills it out for you and allows you to select Augusta. You can also click in the box and scroll through the different cities available and choose one that you're interested in. Now let's say Augusta and Thompson, that's not broad enough for your search and you change your mind. You can close these out of the limiting options by clicking the little X and it will remove them from the box. So instead of Augusta and Thompson, let's choose East Georgia as a region instead. And so that way it captures more cities from that area. Like I said, you can also choose counties, types, newspaper types, and newspaper titles by clicking in the boxes. Uh, one final option available to you is you can limit your search by date range. And if you click in the box, it will open up a calendar option that will allow you to select specific dates from a calendar. You also have the option of entering dates in manual, and I'll do that. So let's say you're interested in recipes between 1820 and 1900. Oops, I hit the search page too quick. But you can see, all right, so you can see you have recipes from East Georgia between 1820 and 1900. I'll hit the search button. And you can see it brings up the thumbnail results page just as with the general search. So I'll click on the first option. It takes just a moment to load. Okay, it looks like there's hit highlighting over on the right hand side of the page. So we'll zoom in so we can get a better view of what it says. And if when you're viewing a page, it seems a little blurry at the beginning, it's because the page is still loading. So you just have to give it a moment. So it looks like this page is loaded completely. So you can see here there are recipes for cornbread, Johnny Cakes. This is the stuff I'm interested in. Olive loaf. Um, I love these old recipes. It's, it's really interesting. Cinnamon Johnny Cake there. So you can see, yeah, it highlights your search results to make it easier to find on the page. Okay, so uh, in addition to uh, advanced searches, you also have uh, region pages. So at the top of the page, actually I'll go back to the home page. And you can get back to the home page by either clicking the home uh, button here or you can click the banner at the top. Either will take you back to the home page. And so uh, we offer uh, region pages for browsing and searching. And these pages are meant to recreate the regional newspaper sites we previously made available to users. Uh, you can reach a region page either by using the drop-down box at the top here, and you can see the, the various regions available, North, West, South, Middle Georgia, East Georgia, and Metro Atlanta, or you can use the map on the home page if you prefer that. So I'll select Middle Georgia, and you can see if you scroll over a region, it will tell you what region it is. So I'll select Middle Georgia. And uh, these are pretty great little pages. Uh, they, by selecting it, you'll get uh, uh, a history of the Middle Georgia area. I'm here a brief history of the Middle Georgia area. You'll have uh, a mini map of where it is on the state. You'll have a list of the counties and cities 
that we've uh, marked as part of that region. Uh, and also at the bottom, you'll see a list of titles that we have available for that region. In this case, we have, and they're organized by county. You can see we have Baldwin County, so these are Miller's Valley papers. We have a few Macon titles, um, some Houston County stuff, and Dublin to Lawrence County. And in addition to uh, the titles by county option, you also have the ability to search within a region using the box on the region page. In addition to just a general search, if you click the show more options, you also have the ability to limit uh, your region search by city or newspaper type, if you'd like to do that. But let me show you what happens when we click on a newspaper uh, title from this list on the region page. It will take you to uh, what's called the title page. So in this case, I clicked on the House and Home Journal, and this was the title of the paper from 1890 to 1900. And so if you, uh, you can see here, in this case for the paper, it shows information about the title, including the city, the publisher, the date range, et cetera, and what titles came before and after as well, in case you're interested in that information. Uh, below the thumbnail image on the title page, you'll also see uh, there's a small history of the newspaper title, in case you're interested in uh, the history of that title for your research. Uh, these title pages also present you with options for viewing uh, the title by calendar view. You can view all the issue front pages, or you can view the, either the first or last issue on the page. I'm going to click all issues front pages because that's kind of interesting. And you can see it just produces search results where you can see every front page of a newspaper. And uh, depending on what the title is, that can be really exciting. There can be lots of images on all these title pages. But in the 1890s, House and Home Journal, it's pretty standard. So in addition to those title pages, we also have uh, a number of browse options. Uh, if you click the browse option at the top of the page, you can see we have browse by title, date, city, and type. We really wanted to try to make uh, try to fulfill the needs of uh, all different types of users. And everyone wants to browse a newspaper title for a different reason or newspapers for a different reason. And so we try to give you as many options as possible. So I'll start by showing you the browse by title option. This one's my personal favorite because it has so many different options. So it starts out, it's a list of every single newspaper title that we currently have on the site. I'll scroll all the way down so you can stay. Now, it's great because it allows you, it's default organized by newspaper title, but it allows you to sort all of the titles by region, county, city, newspaper type. You can browse it by date. You can sort it by number of issues, early state, and latest state. Um, so let me sort it. I'm going to sort it by earliest issue so we can see what the earliest title we have in the archive is. And you can see it's the Louisville Gazette, which uh, began its run in 1799, which is pretty interesting. So um, you can see there's a little calendar next to all these newspaper titles. I'm going to click on the Browse by Date calendar next to the Louisville Gazette so you can see what our Browse by Date option looks like. And you can also access Browse by Date using the Browse by Date uh, option at the top. But this is specific to this title. So you can see it has kind of a calendar view. And every date that's available in that year is lit up in red and can be clicked on. And you can look at different years by clicking the drop-down box. In this case, you see it's only 1799 and 1800 because it changed its name to the Louisville Gazette and Republican Trumpet, I think, in 1800. So uh, these are all the issues in 1799 that are available. So I'll just click on one. So you can see what happens when you do that. And you can see it brings up the entire issue uh, for that date, which is pretty interesting. And then you can click on the issue to get the page view. That is. So that's one of the oldest newspapers, at least for now, in the archive. So in addition to that browse by date option, we also have a browse by city option as well. Click on that. And you can see this is uh, an alphabetical 
uh, listing by city of all the newspapers uh, available in the archive. So you can see uh, we still got some uh, of our legacy papers to add into the site. You can see right now there are a lot of Atlanta and Augusta site, or excuse me, titles available. There's Butler, Columbus, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see it goes all the way to Waycross and Waynesboro. And uh, by clicking on one of these, it will take you to the title page uh, for that issue, which can also give you access to that title's calendar view. So everything's kind of interconnected in the site, so you can get to different places you want to go uh, from a number of different uh, links and, and browsing options. So in addition to the Browse by City option, we also have a Browse by Type option. Um, and the different options included here are school, paper of record, community, African American papers, religious papers, and Native American papers. And as we add different uh, types going forward, we'll add different uh, browse type categories. Um, and you can see there's a description of what each one is when you click on it. In this case, it says community. And so it's newspapers published for the general population. But if I were to click on this tab for the school papers, you can see we have two school papers in there right now, the Future Citizen in Milledgeville and the University Bumblebee in Athens, which is a great newspaper. Name. And if you click on the others, you can see how it sorts them. All right, so we have a number of different uh, other options uh, for users on the right-hand side of the home page. Uh, we have the news option, which will allow you to click on uh, various news items. In this case right now, we have a forthcoming newspapers option. Um, we have about pages, so you can see information about the site, copyright, or different partners. I'll click on the partners page, you can see there different partners we were able to work with. Um, we have a help page here, which provides video tutorials on uh, a number of different subjects, including browsing. Um, if you want to listen to these videos, you'll have to listen to me, because <laughs> I'm the one who did the videos. But we have a tutorial for a lot of the different uh, browsing and searching options. Um, there's a tutorial for clipping. And uh, we also have a frequently asked questions page uh, to answer some of the questions you might have about the site. Um, and additionally, we have a participate page for anyone interested in partnering with the Digital Library of Georgia to digitize a newspaper for the site. It includes information on how you get started, um, how to research copyright, uh, how to uh, locate funding, digitization standards, et cetera. It, um, it's a great uh, first stop for anyone interested in participating in the program. So uh, that's kind of a, a general overview of the site. Um, I'm going to just type, let's see, I'm going to type my last name in here in the general. Oh, you know, I forgot to tell you, uh, on the right-hand side of the home page, we also have a recently added titles box here uh, to keep you updated on what we're adding to the site. And right now, as we're adding older titles that we've already digitized into the site, this will uh, be updated almost on a weekly basis. We'll have new titles here, and it will allow you to click on a title, and it'll take you to the title page and get more information about it. So let me do one more search. I'll try for my last name here, because uh, a lot of uh, genealogists uh, like to use the site, and so it can be useful for that. And so if I click on an issue of the House and Home Journal, you can see that um, for those uh, institutions that have partnered with us, uh, we have a little credit, um, giving them credit for helping us fund the digitization on the site. You can see there's someone named Catherine Summerlin. I have no idea if they're related to me, but I just wanted to do an extra search to give you an idea of what we have available and, and how we credit uh, those that partner with us. All right, so I'm going to skip out of here and go back to the presentation uh, so I can give you a little more information about uh, what's ahead. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have a list of uh, titles that are uh, newly available on the site. Um, and these are titles that you can't find anywhere else that are specific to this site. Uh, they include the Augusta Chronicle and the Augusta Constitutionalist up through the 1850s. 
the Louisville Gazette, which you saw, it's an early paper from the late 1700s. We have the Houston Home Journal uh, through, I think, 1990, the Butler Herald into the 1960s, uh, the Bulletin of the Diocese of Savannah, which is uh, a Catholic newspaper, um, and the Duffy Progress, the Waynesboro True Citizen, and uh, three different titles from Sandersville as well. And uh, we're going to constantly be adding uh, new titles. You can see this image is great of one of the early issues of the Augusta Chronicle. It's pretty great. And so we'll be adding a number of uh, titles in the coming months. Uh, those titles include uh, the Walker County Messenger, uh, which uh, has been, is being made available through Home Place. And uh, that's a Lafayette newspaper. And uh, we should be adding that newspaper to the site uh, within the coming weeks. Uh, we'll also be adding the flagpole from Athens. Uh, if you aren't familiar with the flagpole, it's a uh, it's a local uh, free newspaper, and since the 1980s, it's been covering uh, the music scene, politics, and uh, kind of the culture of Athens for the last few decades. It's a really interesting paper uh, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, we've received a grant to digitize some historically black college and university school newspapers, um, so we'll be uh, we'll be adding. Uh, newspapers from uh, schools like Spelman, so that'll be a great addition uh, to the to the website. And we're also adding some additional antebellum Augusta newspapers. Um, we're going to be adding some really early, the earliest Augusta newspapers that are available on microfilm. We'll be digitizing those and adding them to the site as well. Um, in addition to adding uh, new newspaper titles that weren't previously available, we're also going to be working to add newspapers from our old sites into this new site. Um, and so the newspaper sites in the queue to be added uh, are the Milledgeville site, the Red and Black Archive, and the South Georgia Historic Newspapers Archive. And we'll continue into next year um, adding all of the rest of our old sites into this one site. And uh, eventually those URLs to the old sites will just redirect to the new site. Um, in some cases to the regional pages, for example, with the South Georgia site. Uh, in addition, uh, the Digital Library of Georgia was recently awarded a, a National Digital Newspaper Program grant from the Library of Congress, and that grant is going to allow us to digitize uh, 100,000 newspaper pages over the next two years, an additional 100,000 newspaper pages uh, over the next two years, and we'll be adding those titles both to the National Chronicling America site, if you're familiar with that, uh, but we'll also be adding it to our own local site as well. And we'll be celebrating our 1 million uh, pages uh, milestone uh, next month. Uh, and you can see an image of the Georgia Gazette, which is the very first page of the very first newspaper printed in Georgia. And that's going to be our millionth page. Um, so stay tuned for updates on that in the coming month. Uh, it'll be pretty exciting to have a million newspaper pages digitized. And we're almost there. And you can connect with the DLG through Facebook and Twitter and our blog. And um, you may not be able to record these links here, but uh, if you go to the Georgia Historic Newspaper site, there are links to all of these pages at the bottom of the newspaper site. So that's just kind of a general run through of the website. I'm happy to take any questions you might have, or we can run through the site together if you have questions about how it works. Uh, Donnie, we did have one question uh, about copying and editing the image clips. Right. If that's a functionality of the site office. Right. Okay, so let me go to the site. So let's say we want, all right, I'm going to search for. And if anybody else has questions, feel free to type them in the chat box, and I will make sure they get relayed. Okay, so this is the Augusta directory. So I'm going to zoom in on it. Clipping is not available as a default option. Uh, or I should say uh, saving images from the clipping is not available as a default option. But I believe the site does allow... I'm clipping it now. It does. If you right-click the image, it will allow you to save image option. So there's nothing native to the site. 
but uh, there is a save image option if you were to right click an image there. So other than that, that would be your only uh, option for saving a page. Okay, thank you. Anybody, Anybody else have any questions, questions about, about the site or, or um, you know, future, you know, future plans, plans for the Georgia Historic Newspaper site. Thank you, thank you so much, Donnie, for that awesome and informative presentation. Um, if there are no further questions, and there is still time, um, then uh, I know that uh, today's participants were really being very patient uh, with our technical issues, and I really appreciate that again. And I, I hope you all found the webinar useful uh, to navigating the new historic newspaper site. Uh, participants are going to receive a short uh, four-question survey following the conclusion of this webinar. Uh, your feedback will help us understand what we're doing right and what we can change for the future. Um, and a final reminder that this recording will be available at the links mentioned earlier and posted to the chat box, and they'll also be emailed to all participants. All right, I think uh, that concludes today's presentation. Thank you again for joining us today. You may now disconnect the call. <laughs>